if I still see you. Anyway, okay, so good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining. I'm going to talk about uh, PUSEED, which is missing an E to the pronunciation, but anyway, that's our acronym, uh, which stands for Proactive, Collaborative, and Efficient Complex Discharge. And this is a project which is funded by NHR ARC uh, Wessex, which is the applied research collaboration that we have here in the Wessex area. Uh, and it's, uh, it's interdisciplinary, so there is myself, I'm a lecturer in Southampton Business School. There is uh, uh, Michael Boniface, who is a professor in uh, IT Innovation uh, Center in Electronics and Computer Science. Uh, then we have some people from the hospital, from UHS, Neil Tape and Rachel Bailey, who have uh, sadly now left, uh, I think both have now left the, the roles. Uh, then we have Antonio Martinez, who is also from the business school, Peter Griffiths, who is a professor in uh, health sciences, and then uh, Abby and Eleanor, uh, who are in, the, uh, in, in Southern Health, so they are uh, nurses, they are community nurses. And then uh, Dan, Mason, and Lee are our research fellows. So as you see, we have expertise from a few different uh, places across the university and also on the, on the health sector. So the project is all about uh, complex discharge. Uh, I'm, I'm sure you are all aware what, what, what it stands for, but, but, but formally our definition is we have some patients that are in the hospital that they need a specific level of, of care after they leave, that, that might be some nursing care or they might need to go to a care home or have some social care assistance, whatever it is. And that needs to be in place when they leave the hospital. Okay, so, so that's what we refer as, as complex discharge. Uh, it, this is a, a, a problem. Uh, so, so there are some figures. They are, they are slightly a bit, a bit old now because they are from, from when we did the proposal initially. But there was like this big aggregated statistic in 2018-19. There was 1.5 million days of uh, delayed discharges in the UK. So that's the days that passed since people who was ready to go home until they actually went. 75% uh, of those were be because of this, of, of awaiting community care. And if we look at the hospital uh, in Southampton, so so on January, and that, that's January 2021, um, there were, they had like 136 patients that could go home but only 42 had the date to go home. So the others were sort of in a limbo. Uh, so, so why is this so complicated, right? Uh, so, so, and this is most of the work we've, we've done so far, these early stages of the project. So we, we looked at a lot of the causes and, and what could be done. So I, I'll just use an example for this. This rose of patient, uh, 96, very old, is rec uh, receiving some insulin injections at home. So some is already having some type of community care and then got a fracture here. Okay. Goes to the hospital, maybe spends a week, uh, then can go home, but maybe she cannot live on her own anymore. Maybe she needs some, some type of social assistance or whatever it is. So this becomes a complex discharge case because there's something new that needs to be arranged. Uh, and they decide perhaps uh, that the best place uh, for her is, is to have a care home, to, to live in a care home and get some specific community support, okay? And normally what the hospital would, would do is uh, like the, the, the NHS uh, guiding principle is to try and get people, in, they have the several pathways, they want to try them in the lower ones, which means go home if you can go home and get whatever support you need at home, but sometimes it's not possible, right? So in this case, perhaps that was not possible, but if that's not available, for example, if there is not a space in a care home, which is very often the case, if the patient is a bit uh, difficult to care for because it needs some, some specific skills or things like that, uh, then the, unfortunately the patient will, will just stay in the hospital. Now, when we look at this from, from a point of, of, of data and, and analytics, there are a few things that, that we can think can be done uh, a bit uh, better, and I'll put quotation marks around better. Uh, and uh, one of the things is, for example, if Rose was receiving insulin injections, we know that that's likely not to be cured in the hospital. So that's going to be there when, when she's leaving. So from the moment she's admitted, 
we know that that will need to be arranged or, or rearranged if she's changing location, for example. But if it's something like a fractured hip, which is quite common in an elderly age, then we can probably have a pretty good idea how long she will stay in the hospital and we'll have a pretty good idea of a 96 year old that goes with a fractured hip in the hospital, it's very likely to need some extra support when they leave. Uh, this, so we can have some, some fancy machine learning predictions and, and, and algorithms, but it's, it's, it's gonna be fairly easy to know these things with a moderate degree of certainty. There will be also, because she was taking insulin injections, there will be information available from the community side. They will, they will know, I don't know, things about her house, how it is, what, what she needs, all that sort of thing that, that could be used. So the idea is we could perhaps start from the moment Rose is admitted, we could sort of start thinking what's gonna be needed when, she's, when, when that week has passed, okay? The reason I was putting quotation marks around that is because, I mean, it's not that this stuff is not happening in the hospital and there is a, an excellent team and there's excellent professionals that, that know these things. And, 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 and because they are people, they do this for a very long time. They are, they are very caring. So they, people like Rose, maybe they will know even by name if they've been in the hospital several times, they, they know their situation. But the problem with that is that these people sometimes sit on leave or these people sometimes change roles and, 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 and they cannot really hold in their head the information about the whole hospital, right? So the idea of the project is to try and use this data uh, in, in more in a global sense, looking at community services, looking at the hospital and try and improve this flow from, from hospital to the community. Now, if we look at why is it difficult to to discharge people, uh, then what, what seems like, like a straight path from the hospital to the community, it's, it's more of a bumpy road. So the, the first thing is uh, you need to ask all these questions like what's the optimal discharge point? Uh, what pathway should we choose? What will be actu the actual care needs that the patient will have? Because there's uh, always a bit of a decision to be made on that as well. You need to decide on the setting. You need to decide who, I mean, even if you know what care is needed, who, who is going to deliver that? Because sometimes you would have more than one option. And then there is the practicality. So you maybe you need to arrange transport for, for the patient. You need to make sure the medication is ready. So one of the things that, that came to light when we talk to people, if it's, if it's a Friday, care homes are very unlikely to take a patient, a complex patient, because they cannot maybe get hold of the GP until Monday, or maybe they cannot get hold of the usual pharmacy, uh, all of that thing. So they say, it's not very safe for us to get this person we know nothing about on a Friday, just, just running up to the weekend. So there's all, all these things that make it complicated. Uh, but also the answers to those questions are provided by different stakeholders. So there's the hospital, the patient, there's a nursing home, there might be a local authority with the funding. It might be a social care provider. CCG might be involved as well. The community services, uh, the, the, the nursing home. So all of them will take part in this. All of them have to agree. And, and that's, that's quite difficult, right? Uh, and and this, is just, this is just a list. And also when we say things like community services, well, that's or a, a lot of things inside that. And when we say nursing homes, so most of them, the vast majority are also private providers. They are companies, they, they may say no for no reason. They, they, they may not take the patient. They don't feel comfortable with the workload. It's, it's for them. So it's very difficult to get all, all of these stakeholders to, to agree. Now, what we want to do is uh, in the hospital, they have a, a complex discharge platform. So they record some, some data regarding all the complex discharge uh, process. So they have lots of historical data. And we wanted to make a tool that helps uh, on the collaborative decision-making for all of these stakeholders. We have two pillars, a technical bit of it. One is modeling the resources in the community and the other one is predicting the uh, discharge risks of, uh, of the patient and, and doing some predictions. So I have a few slides that are slightly more technical now, but let's 
I'll try it to be sort of light on, 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 on the technical detail. But for the, for the prediction, the prediction models, which we've labeled green, uh, so they will basically take, uh, think about one patient, they will have some information when they are admitted. Some of the information will be available at different stages, uh, but, but anyway, I'm not gonna talk too much about that. But there will be things like, uh, I don't know, the, the gender, the age, the, the needs they have, where, what they were in the hospital for, and, and maybe there's some information on the discharge already and, and the things they need. So what the prediction model will do in, in, in this context is it will get historical data. Lots of patients that have been in the hospital in the past 10 years. It trains on that sort of, it learns, for example, it learns what it means to fracture your hip uh, for, for different people. And then it will do some predictions and the predictions will not be just an exact uh, an exact thing, it, they will have a probability. So for example, if we talk about the discharge date, uh, then I have this list here of, of, I mean, this is random data, but we have this list of days here in May, and then we know the person is very likely to be discharged on the 17th, is most likely, but there's a few other days that are likely as well. Okay, so this is the type of output we can get from these models and same from the discharge needs. So for example, for the example with Rose, maybe you get 100% probability of insulin injections, but social care uh, help, maybe that's an 80%, things, things like that. That's what we can get. And for some patients, we'll get very accurate things. And for others, maybe, maybe not so much. That's okay, we want to work with that. Then we have a deterministic optimization model. Deterministic means there is no randomness on it. Uh, and this, we, this model, the, the red model, as I call it, will feed from two things. One is from a patient, and this patient is now ready to discharge, and we know everything about them. And then we have the community services, and we know everything about them. Uh, so, so just think one patient and one community service. And in particular, for the community service, we know what other patients they have, right? We, we know the other people who is, uh, who is in the service. Uh, and this model will optimize uh, and it will do three things. It can tell us what's the best way of inserting this patient in the, in the existing workload of a service. It will tell us how much work it is. So, and just, just think, for example, community nurses that go to people's homes, right? So they will do like a route. So this will tell you, well, this patient should be inserted after this other one because it's on the same. I think that's just more research study and wrote my master's dissertation titled The Perceived Factors in Objects Oh, okay. um, and then, so we, we will know how uh, long it takes for, it, it, these numbers will be different for different uh, services. Uh, and it will help also the community services to organize and schedule the, the routes uh, in an efficient way. Uh, and finally, we have the blue model, which is a stochastic optimization framework. So th this means we are trying to optimize the whole thing, the whole process, and it's a stochastic because we have some uncertainty on it. So on the left side, we will have this machine learning, the predictive model that will do this, these predictions with some certainty uh, of, of who is in the hospital, when they are gonna be discharged and what they need. On the right side, we will be interacting with this um, red model just to say, uh, just to understand how much workload that, it, that, that is for the different community services to send those patients. We can generate lots of scenarios based on these predictions, like for the person we saw earlier, what if this person lives on the 16th, on the 17th of May, on the 18th, we can see how they can be inserted in different ways. Oops. No, what happened? Uh, and based on this, we will come with optimized discharge decisions. Who should go where uh, and, and what? So what's the most efficient way to send people to places? We can also have a look in the future. Let's not use too much this care home for patients with dementia if we don't need it, because we know next week this person is gonna be discharging and, and is gonna need the place. So that we can have that sort of thing. The idea is not just to tell the hospital what to do with every patient, so is to get a suggested decision. So this can then go to the team who is dealing with this now. They can look at it, they can see 
I mean, a, a great point is the transparency. They can talk to patients, they can talk to the services, they can say, listen, we think this is the best because we have these other patients and this is how, how it is working. And then they, together with the stakeholders, will make a decision. Uh, there's two side benefits to this. One is for the machine learning model, we can flag the information up early. Uh, so for, for, the, for, for clinicians and sometimes even in the hospital, the hospital is really big, there's lots of services. Not all of them are aware of each other or they are aware of each other, but maybe they don't think that the patient might be discharged to a virtual world. Maybe they don't think of that, so we can flag this, this sort of thing. And also the community services, they can use this red model to organize their own workload if they want. So we will make that available to them because a lot of these plans normally uh, are made uh, manually, which is very time consuming. That's it. Maybe I was a bit over the time. Uh, I'm happy to take your questions. Uh, my email is there if anyone wants to have any afterthoughts or wants to be involved in any PPI, feel free to, to email me. Uh,